that um, realize that the function, what determines whether you have a max or min is the a, because if it's positive, it's going up, which means then you have a minimum. If the a is negative, it points down. It's a reflection. So that means you, that would give you a maximum. So the a determines if you have a max or a min. The k is your max or min. What if it doesn't have a what? Then you would assume positive one. Okay, uh, number two, translation, the two means vertical what? Vertical. vertical stretch would be better. All right, and then the minus four would be four to the right, and minus one would be one down. That should have been what you put on number two. Vertical stretch, four right, one down. Or down one. All right, number three. On number three, what you should have been putting, um, again, the negative means reflection. The one-fourth, folks, is not in parentheses. There was no horizontal stretch or compression. Horizontal stretch and compression can only happen when the number is in front of the x, but in parentheses, in front of the x. Like parentheses, one-fourth x, close parentheses, squared. Okay, otherwise, that right there, because the a is between 0 and 1, means that you have a vertical compression. The plus 2 means you go up 2. There you go. I'm sorry, what? A negative means you have a reflection. When you have a negative in the very front, you have a reflection. And then it's just normal. You don't say anything. All right. Number four. Uh, vertically stretched by a factor of two. That's the number that should go in front. 14 units to the right means I need to put x. To the right means I'm going to say uh, minus 14 then squared, and then you could say plus 6. That's your answer for number 4. Those translations you need to understand. They're going to appear. Number 5. What's the vertex? Okay, two negative seven. That right there pretty much should help you answer the whole question, because the two negative seven, the axis of symmetry is the x coordinate of the vertex. So if you put two negative seven as your vertex, then your axis of symmetry is just x equals two. Also, your max or min value is the y. So your max or min value is negative seven. Now, how do you decide if it's a max or min? Well, that one faces up because this is a positive, so it faces up. So that means you have a min. There you go. So number five should be x equals. Two, or the vertex is 2, negative 7. The x symmetry is 2. Since the face is upward, you have a min, which is negative 7. There's the graph. There you go. All right. Any questions on that? Number 6. What's the vertex on that one? Negative 2, 5. So that means your axis of symmetry should be negative 2. Your max or min should be 5. Since it's a negative in front, that means it's a reflection, which means it's facing down, which means you have a max. So your max is 5. There you go. All right. Okay. So if you notice, in vertex form, it should be fairly easy to answer those type of questions. And that all six of those questions... Those answers could have been found on, say, um, the notes from 5.1, maybe the first example of 5.2. And yes, on the board, pretty much all the explanations that you would need from that. Um, on number 7, that's standard form. That's where you have to do the negative b over 2a. So you're saying negative 12 over 2 times 4, which will give you an answer of negative 3 halves. That's the x-coordinate of your vertex. You would put that back into the x on the function to find the y value. That's what it means when I say negative b over 2a, function of negative b over 2a. It means substitute it back in. 
And if you do that, you should get negative 12, which would tell you since it opens upward, that's a min, your vertex is, or your axis symmetry is at negative 3 halves, and your min is at negative 12. You can't put a decimal for it. If you want to put negative 1.5, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. Factoring. This should be easy for those that skipped it or didn't do it for whatever reason. Um, plus plus should be plus plus in the parentheses. What two numbers multiply to give you 24 would add up to 11. You should be able to, if I ask you what two numbers multiply to give you 24, you should be able to quickly go 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. I expect as high school students that Josh should be able to come up with your multiplication tables that quickly. Elementary kids are about asked to come up with them close to that quickly. So, what two numbers out of those to add up to 11? 3 and 8, that's what goes in parentheses. There you go, x plus 3, x plus 8. There you go, that's it, you're done. Uh, number 9, that should have been 10x, not 11x. So parentheses, again, plus and minus means plus and minus parentheses. Numbers that multiply to give you 39 are 1 and 39, 3 and 13. Which of those subtract to give you a 10? 3 and 13. And it should be 13 minus 3 because 13 minus 3 will give me a positive 10. Number 10, if there's a 2 in front of the x squared, what do you mean, what are you going to put in both parentheses? 2x. 2x. Okay, so start off with that, 2x, 2x. Minus, minus is a plus, minus, so you will put plus and minus. Then from there, you got to make sure that you say here, um, 2, yeah, 2 times 12 is 24, factors of 24, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. 3 and 8 will give me the 5, but I want it to be 3 minus 8 to get negative 5. Divide out the extra 2, and that's where you get 2x plus 3, x minus 4. On number 11, that's the difference of two squares, which means you're going to put plus and minus in the parentheses. What's the square root of 49? What's the square root of 64? There you go, you're done. That's it. It's all about square roots with those last two. No, but you could be writing it down anyway. Great trinomial. On number 12, that's the one where we go parentheses, squared, Sign in the middle, put it there. What's square root of 25? 5. What's square root of 16? 4. There you go. 5, x minus 4. That's only if the two outside numbers are squared. Correct. Kind of forgot that? Okay. On the next ones, folks, uh, I'll, let me just put the answers there. But on those, um, all I did was graph those on the calculator, then did the trace, graph trace, which was, I think, menu 5-1, to find those zeros. Does anyone not understand what we're doing there, and do I need to show that? If you can graph it on the calculator and then just do a menu 5-1, you can find the zeros on the calculator. The calculator will tell you it's a zero. Go with that. Graphing them on the calculator, doing the whole menu 5, 1 to get the graph trace. All right, let's look at solving. Plus plus means what in the parentheses? Plus plus. Oops, I thought I was. Okay, that's sad. Again. You should have those and think. Whatever numbers you have in parentheses, take the opposite. When you're solving, it's going to be basically the opposite of whatever's in the parentheses. On the bonus, it's basically... Okay, here's the thing with these types of word problems. If they ask for a maximum 
or a minimum. They're basically asking you to find the vertex. So if you say negative B over 2A, you will get 6,122. Okay. Take that, plug it back into the R, that will give you 300. This is your maximum point. 300 represents the horsepower, the 6,122 represents the revolutions per minute. There you go. Are we going to have a horsepower? As a bonus, yes, for sure. Sometimes, some way, yes. Wait, so what was the... Basically, the, the, I was using the negative B over 2A, using the vertex formula from standard form. All right. Well, wait, what do you mean plug it back into the... Like, one, the negative B over 2A, once I find the 6,122, put that back into the R's and solve. Like say, negative point zero 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 one four seven times 6,122 squared plus point eighteen times 6,122 minus 251. Okay, but the B, the B is 18? Point 18, yes. Negative point zero 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 one four seven, yes. All right, let's look at the review. Uh, descriptions, again, make sure you know that vertex formula. When I want to go four units to the left, is that x plus or x minus? Plus. plus. x plus four, and then one up should be plus one. So x plus four squared plus one. That's a plus one. It really doesn't look like That's one. Are you putting in modulus Yes. Okay. So the answer for number one should be x plus four squared plus one. The four units to the left means you went plus four, added four to the parentheses. The up one means plus one. Reflection. What does that mean when I put a reflection? What's the first thing you should put? Negative. Negative. That's at the very front. Then from there, vertical stretch. That's the number in front of the x squared. So you will say vertical stretch is 3, so I'm going to go put a 3. Then you can put the x squared, and if there was a horizontal, move it to the left or to the right, you could add those things in there. But that's all you need for number 2, negative 3x squared. If you want to put in parentheses, yay, for you. <clears throat> vertex form on number 3, number 4. What's the vertex of number 3? Three negative two. Take the opposite of whatever's in parentheses, the one that's outside the parentheses, keep it the same. That's your vertex. From there, you should be able to answer a lot of questions. Okay, I'll look at number four. Is there any number inside the parentheses? No, because there's not even parentheses. So what are you going to put? No, 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 no. You got to have a parentheses. If you don't have an H, because there's no parentheses, then put a zero, because there was no H. This negative 2 represents vertical stretch or compression. It has nothing to do with the vertex. Okay? So, there was no H, 0, 4. That's your vertex. Okay. From there, you could even hopefully describe the transformations. That this minus 3 tells you, according to like your formula, minus 3 means I should go to the right 3, and the minus 2 means I should go down two. Three right, down two. Oh, so that's just a negative? Now, the negative here tells me reflection. The negative in the front tells me reflection. That's the one that makes it go down. Okay? That two is a vertical stretch, and the plus four tells me go up four. Those are the transformations Wait, for three that, and four. Why are you going to write this negative? Because, remember, think opposite in the parentheses. And there's the graphs for those. Again, rough graphs are fine. If I even asked for the graphs this time. Um, keep in mind, from the vertex, you should be able to find like the axis symmetry, the max or min value. Um, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. How? Oh, I miscounted. Okay. Wait, 
All right. What I'm doing here is vertex 3, negative 2 should be right here. Hopefully, I can. Okay. And then you could use, like, you can actually just graph it on the calculator to give me a rough sketch. But I could have done, say, um, like. Wait, if you plug in the equation without this, would you get the. Three. 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 So x equals three. That's it. Remember, the axis symmetry is the x value of the vertex. That's it. Uh, number four, is that a maximum or minimum? Is that point a maximum or minimum? It's a max. What's the value of that? What's the y value? Four. That answer is number six. Okay, keep in mind, if you look at the vertex, the axis symmetry is the x value. The max or min is the y value. Is that something you might want to put on your note card? Probably. Estimating on the zeros, but you can see those are the answers I got. You want a more accurate answer? Graph them on the calculator and do a graph trace. Because when you do the graph trace, it actually tells you the zeros. So there you go. I will probably make those bonuses, uh, but might as well make sure we know them. 11. On 11, 12, and 13, those will probably end up being bonus problems. All you got to do on 11 is plug in the 2 in place of the, the T. And whatever that the answer you got was 138.5. Mm -hmm. Number 12 asks about the highest point. Remember, the highest point, anytime you see that wording, you should think vertex. Oh, wait, so wait, on 11, you have to move the... You just put the 2 in the equation? You would have to move the right inside. What do you mean move it inside? And then if you plug that in, you should get 158.75. What I mean is this. Negative B over 2A would give me that negative 100 over 2 times negative 16, which would give you 25 over 8. You can type that, or you can write 25 over 8, or change that to a decimal. Okay. Take that answer, put it in place of the T's, and should end up with 158.75. That is your highest point. This tells you that it would tell, take three seconds, three, a little over three seconds to get to the maximum height. The maximum height is 158.75 feet. On 13, when will it hit the ground? Find the zeros. Again, graph it on the calculator. Find the zeros. Your answer should be about 6.3. Number 14, you've got x squared minus x minus 30 equals 0. When you have minus minus, what do you put in parentheses? Plus and minus. Two numbers that multiply to give you 30, subtract to give you a 1. This is 14. So 5 and 6, because 5 minus 5 times 6 is 30, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And then again, when you're solving, remember, think opposite of the parentheses. Whatever number, whatever the numbers were in the parentheses, they're going to be the opposites when you solve it. Okay, so number 14 should be negative 5 or positive 6. Yes, ma'am? What? Why again? 16. 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Plus minus is what? Okay. And since there's a 3 in front of the x squared, you've got to make sure you put a 3 in front of both x's. Did I put the plus minus? No, I forgot to put the plus minus. All right, what do you do with the 3 and the 1? 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, factors of 3 are 1 and 3. Uh, that would subtract to give you a 2. So it should be 3 minus 2, or 3 minus 1, sorry. Divide out the extra 3. So you have x plus 1 is equal to, or x plus 1 parentheses, 3x minus 1, and then you can solve, and you should end up with negative 1 and positive 1 third. Wait, I don't know what you do I'm sorry, what? What do you do when you solve? I set them equal to... You've got to remember that you have the x squared minus 25. That's the difference of two squares, so you put plus and minus. Square roots. What's the square root of 25? Five. There you go. And so you'll say x is equal to plus and minus 5. There you go. Or negative 5 and positive 5. All done. That's 17. Now we can go to the back. Completing the square. 
Um, all right, look. If you see how number 19 is typed, this is how I would start to write it for myself, where I've got a space, a blank, and I've already got the parentheses and a square under it. Because the reason why, what's my first step I'm going to do? Divide by 2. That's the number that will go in the parentheses. So 6 divided by 2 is? Negative 3. So I'm going to put minus 3 inside the parentheses. Then what am I going to do with that 3? Add it to the... Ah. What do you got? What, what that little square, square it? Three squared is nine. nine, and then I would add it to both sides. What's one plus nine? Not hard. Push it. How do I get rid of? How do I solve now? Uh, now how do you get rid of the square? Take the square root. Before you do the plus three, take the square root. When you do that, that will leave you just the x minus three plus and minus square root of ten. Then you can say plus 3. And you're done. That's your answer. 3 plus or minus square root of 10. Next example is x squared minus 8x. Again, blank plus, equals 5. All right. What's... No, 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 no. Divide by 2. Before you square, divide by 2. Negative 4. Then 4 squared is plus 16. And you always have a plus there. Remember, it's always plus plus for solving. It's always plus plus. 5 plus 16 is 21. Then you can take square root. And you can kind of follow those steps. And then how do I get rid of the minus 4? There you go. Number 21, um, the minus 1, uh, you have to think of it like this. The x's do not want a number with them. So they kick the minus 1 over to the other side. It becomes pi equals 1. And then I can work this normally the way I would. So what's the first step after that is to do what? Divide by 2. That should give me the x minus 2. Square that, I get 4. Add that, and I got 5. Then, last two steps. What are the last two steps every time? Square root. Square root, and then you're going to add or subtract. X minus two is five. There you go. Are you going to take points off if you don't have the plus minus? Yes. Okay. Half credit. You're only giving me half the answer. Always put plus and minus in front of the square root. Any other questions? All right, ready to move on. Number 22, vertex form. That's a little bit different. Okay, it's not that hard. It's kind of the same steps, but it's a little bit different. Now, notice what I'm doing here is I'm separating the x's from the number, and I'm putting a plus in the parentheses, a minus outside the parentheses. In vertex form, it will always be a plus in the parentheses, minus outside the parentheses. Always. Now, what's negative 10 divided by 2? Negative 5. Okay, then what's 5 squared? Okay, and 25 and 25, right there, both of them. Then if you say negative 90 minus 25, you'll have negative 115. That would be it. You're done. You've got the vertex form. There's some extra work here about what somebody was asking in another class of like, what are those steps meaning? But really here, that x minus 5 squared minus 115, that's it. You're done. You can circle that answer. The vertex out of that is, what's the vertex? Five. Positive 5, five. Comma, negative 115. It's just that in fifth period, I think it was fifth period, they were asking, how, what am I supposed to do? Remember, you're dividing by 2. That number goes in the parentheses. You will square that number. That's the number that goes in the box, both boxes. That's all that was trying to do. However you can write that down, a general example to help explain that to you, to do what steps? Yay!
That would mean that would be the better for you to understand it. Remember, you can use a note card. So don't forget, use a note card. Write small. Okay, any questions? Uh, x squared minus 12x. Again, notice how I'm separating it, plus 38. What's uh, 12 divided by 2? And then what do I do with the 6? Square it. And you put 36 on inside and outside. What's 38 minus 36? There's your vertex form. You're done. Yes. Inside the parentheses, you will put a plus. Outside, you put a minus. Every time. Yeah? And what's the vertex out of that? Positive 6 and 2. Remember, always think opposite of the parentheses. No, no, in the parentheses, opposite of the parentheses. Outside, the same. I will ask for it. Then you're only getting it half right? Okay. Yes. All right. Let's see. On 24, I have x squared plus 6 x plus space minus 4 and after that minus 4 I should put another minus okay and then I've got my parentheses here squared 6 divided by 2 is 3 9 9 okay so that means there I'm done Negative 3, negative 13. You're done.